Hello everybody, welcome back and congratulations on making it all the way to part 10, we're in double digits land, how very exciting. Today we're going to be looking at something very important and we're going to be putting together a basic menu system, okay? It's going to be a very simple screen first of all and we'll probably expand it a bit, make it a bit fancier in later versions. But uh, we're just going to start off by being able to put in a few options, move between them, uh, have it show which one we've selected at any point in time, and then do a thing based on the thing we've selected, okay? That's the bare bones functionality of any menu. And uh, that's what we're going to be setting up today. So the first thing we want to do is create a new room for our menu, okay? We want this to be a fairly separate screen, and then we'll use our transition effects that we created before to move from it to our actual game, okay? So I've gone and created something that looks very similar to our regular game, okay? It looks very much like the actual game itself, um, but it's just going to be scrolling um, constantly our background elements. And I've set this up just through a number of background layers. You can do this yourself however you want to. But um, I put that this isn't a tile layer down here, this dirt, okay? I, I put together a new sprite that was just an assembly of like three of those tiles um, on top of one another. And uh, used that as a background just so that I could sort of tile it uh, vertically using, uh, horizontally rather, using the background layer. And then if you scroll down on a background layer, you can actually set a horizontal speed, okay? And I set that to minus three. I set the trees in the background to minus two and the mountains to minus one so that I retain that kind of depth effect. I'm not sure if I've worked those numbers out to be exactly correct, like if they're exactly what they should be based on the parallax of the other things, but it creates a good enough effect for what I'm going with at the moment. So um, yeah, I can I can preview how that looks actually with the background scrolling and stuff like that when it's set up in the IDE. If I just hit this uh, play animation button in the room editor, it'll actually do this for me so I can actually see kind of what it's going to look like. This is what our menu is just going to look like. Um, I might at a later point add like a version of the player down here and a big uh, like title uh, here when we come up with a name for the game. But for now I'm just going to have this screen and I'm going to have a simple menu just in the bottom right of it, okay? That's all I'm going to do. Once you've got your new room set up exactly how you want it um, visually, we need to do a couple of things um, in order to set up the environment for our menu. So the first thing I want to do is where you've placed uh, our O transition from the other part, our, our transition controlling object. That's a persistent object and we just put it in here because it was this was the first room of our game and we wanted it to exist just through, for the full duration of our game. But obviously if our menu is going to come before that, and it should by the way, if you haven't already, put your menu room to the top of your list so that it's the first one that gets run. Um, but in our R1 here, in our, our first level where we've got the transition object, I'm going to delete that from here and I'm going to come to our menu and on an instances layer I have here, I'm just going to place that into this room instead. Okay, I'm also going to place a copy of O camera into this room as well. That's not a persistent object, but I'll need that in here just so that I can use um, our screen shake effect uh, that we set up before as well, just as an, a nice little touch when we're like picking our options from the menu. Uh, we can add a bit of screen shake just to sort of add to the effect. Hello everybody, it's Sean here just interrupting myself because I made a mistake, how embarrassing. By bringing this camera object into the menu room, I forgot that the camera interacts with layers that are named mountains and trees to set up our parallax scrolling. But we don't want that here because we've set up automatic scrolling ourselves in the IDE. So you'll notice for the rest of this video, whenever I run the game on our menu, the trees and mountains don't scroll and it looks really weird. How silly of me. In order to fix this, all you need to do is change the name of the layers that you have your trees and mountains on, assuming you're doing the exact same thing I'm doing the same layers, you may, maybe you don't, maybe you didn't make this mistake in the first place, but just if you've got the same layers as me, change the name of your trees layer and your mountains layer to be something like trees underscore menu or mountains underscore menu or whatever, and then the camera object won't interact with them at all. Okay, I'll give you back now. Sorry! The one other thing I would want to do as well is in O Player we had uh, this event, this key press R event that restarts the game. I'm actually going to right click that and hit cut and take it out of the player object and put it into the camera. Okay, um, just because this is an object that's always there. Um, in fact, actually, an even better idea might be to delete that. Um, let's put it into O Transition instead because that actually is a persistent object that we know is always going to be around. Okay. Okay, once all that's done, let's create our menu object. Okay, so right click in objects, hit create object, and call this one O menu. Uh, first of all, I'm actually just going to come straight to our menu and do something I tend to forget to do a lot, and actually put the menu into the game world right away rather than leaving it to the end where I'll forget. Okay, so just put that also just on the instances layer anywhere you want to really. Um, 
we're going to work out positions dynamically so it doesn't work out it, it doesn't matter where exactly you put it in the room so just uh along with transition and camera just put the menu object into the menu room now let's come back to the object and add the create event okay let's uh, i'm going to press f12 just give us lots of room uh, i'm going to maximize this as well okay we'll call this event uh gui vars menu setup because that's that's what it is i guess that's what we're going to do um and i'm just going to assign all the different variables that we're going to need for this particular um for this particular system for making our menu work okay um some of them you might not understand what i'm going to do with them right away but um they'll make sense as as we carry on okay so these are just the variables you're going to need i'm going to make gui underscore width uh, it's going to be equal to display get gui width open bracket close bracket semicolon and then very similarly gui height equal display gui uh get gui height Oh, right, close bracket, semicolon. Let's make this a bit bigger, just so you can see everything I'm doing. Cool. GUI underscore margin is going to be 32. Um, what we're going to do, instead of just using magic numbers where we know that our screen is 1024 by 768, I think, um, and just saying, like, okay, draw this at roughly like 1700 ish to be in the bottom right, we're going to get the values so that we can change. Uh, the size of our game and the size of our resolution and stuff on the fly and still have this work and still have it draw stuff where we expect it to roughly okay the margin is just going to be like 32 pixels from the edge of the screen no matter how big the screen is okay that's where we're going to kind of draw everything just to kind of give us a bit of space so we don't draw things right at the edge of the screen um, next ver variable we want is menu underscore x is going to equal uh, GUI width plus 200 okay um, which means that that's going to be the x position of our menu at any point in time and we're going to change that as well so that it starts off uh, GUI width plus 200 is going to be off the edge of the screen to the right um, but we're going to reduce it over time so that it, com it comes in from the right it enters from the right okay in fact first of all I'm just going to comment that out um, and put a semicolon on there just leaving that there ready for us later and initially I'm just going to put uh, menu x as being GUI width which is the far right of the screen okay the reason I'm doing that is so that when we do our draw stuff, we can we can see it right away and test it, and then we'll put it back to plus 200 when we're ready to do the bit that, that brings it onto the screen, okay? So we'll just leave it at that for now. Uh, menu underscore Y is going to be GUI underscore height minus GUI underscore margin, okay? Uh, I, I could put the minus margin on there in, in here as well, but it, it doesn't really matter because that's just going to be what it's going to be for testing initially. Um, so our menu height, uh, our GUI height is the bottom of the screen, then minus that margin just to, to buffer us off the bottom. Again, that's what I mean. I could put that in the X, but uh, it's, it's okay for now. Uh, menu underscore X underscore target. Uh, this variable is going to be where we're looking to actually end up our GUI, which is what I just said. It's going to be GUI width minus GUI margin. Um, then we want menu speed. Uh, this is going to be the value that decides how quickly our menu like moves from from the, off the edge of the screen onto the screen. Um, and the lower the number is going to be better, and you'll see why that is later. I'll just leave a reminder here. Lower is faster, no, not better necessarily, but faster. Uh, menu underscore font. Uh, that's we're gonna draw our menu as text. Okay, you could draw it as images if you wanted, and it's very very similar. You do almost exactly the same thing. You would just use draw sprite or something instead of draw text, and you'll see when we get to that. Uh, but I'm gonna use a font. I'm gonna call F menu. Okay. Um, speaking of which, I should probably add that font now. So I'm gonna go to fonts. Right click and hit create. Um, we'll call it F menu, and I'm going to use a, f a pixel font I found called uh, Born to Be Sporty. Okay, I'm going to make that about size 24. I think it's the right size for it. Um, if it's not, I'll correct it later. But I th I'm pretty sure that's the size I used for it before. Okay, so let's close that and come back now to that tab at the top there. Menu, oh menu create. Um, so that'll turn red now because that font is actually in our game. And the next variable is going to be menu underscore item height equals font underscore get size f menu. 
so that we can change this font around and then still have our stuff be positioned correctly based on how big the text happens to be so it doesn't like overlap one another and all that kind of thing. Um, then I want menu underscore committed is going to equal minus one and then this value is basically going to get set to a number uh, when we select a menu item. So when we set new game it'll probably get set to like two and when we set it to the continue is set to one and when it's set to quit it's set to zero and then based on that number we'll do something right um, and we start at a minus one because we're not initially committed to anything okay and then last of all menu underscore control equals true okay uh, it's just going to be a boolean that decides whether or not we have control of the menu and we can move up and down and select things which will set to false once we've actually selected an option so that you can't select multiple options before one gets carried out right okay um, after that, um, we've almost got all our variables done now, but we want to actually set up um, the menu itself, okay? Uh, so we want to decide what our menu entries are going to be. I'm going to type menu, uh, open square bracket to, close square bracket, equals, um, open uh, quotation mark, new game, close quotation mark, semicolon. Uh, then menu, open square bracket, one, close square bracket, equals, continue uh, then menu open square bracket zero close square bracket equals quit and these are going to be the options of our game Ooh, and then close that there we go so this here what I've created is what's called an array okay um, this is a good way of creating a list of variables that are related to one another and that you want to sort of find a specific entry of it's basically a way of containing lots of uh, lots of variables inside a list of variables inside one variable. Why would you want to put them all in one variable? It's so that you can use that one variable and other variables to decide which entry you want to find. So it allows me to do something like, for example, I'm going to have a variable called menu underscore cursor, uh, which is going to decide which option we're currently looking at in our menu, okay? And for that number to be relevant, um, we can use an array so that when either I type say menu open square bracket menu cursor after this point or yeah, it would have to be sometime after that point um, we would be referring to a particular entry of this array okay based on what we put in the square bracket and what we put in the square bracket is menu cursor which is two which would bring us to entry two up here which is new game okay now you might be wondering and be a bit confused why i've done it in a seemingly backwards order where i've created menu two is new game then one continue and zero quit um that has to do with how i'm drawing things um in the the draw event later and just the order I draw it, I draw it from the bottom upwards, the bottom of the menu upwards, so I want to draw a quit, then continue, and then new game. Um, because like finding the, we've, we've got something that finds the bottom really easily without having to find the bottom and then go up a bit and then work down, it's easier to just go from the bottom and move up, okay? Um, but also, um, it's actually more efficient, and this is a much more trivial point, but it is more efficient when you declare an array to start with the biggest variable because it when you make an array, um, GameMaker makes room in memory for every entry of that array. And so if I make a second, make the second entry first, um, it still reserves the memory for entry one and two. Um, and then it doesn't have to reserve that memory like again and, and, and keep adding to the memory every time it creates a new one. It just does it all at once. And then it just fills in the memory with the data later. So it's a slightly, a small amount more efficient, okay? It's not something you really need to worry about most of the time, but you know, it, it was it, as I said, it was mostly done for convenience during the drawing system. But um, that that either way, that's the explanation for why I've done it in a seemingly anti-intuitive way. Okay, uh, the last variable I'm going to need here is called menu underscore items. Okay, uh, this is going to tell us exactly how many entries there are, how how many menu items there are, which will be useful when we're drawing it, so we know when to stop looking for things to draw. Okay. Um, we can get this dynamic, I could just put in three, right, because I can see one, two, three, um, but I want to get this dynamically so we can keep adding options and not have to change this number. So I'm going to type array underscore length underscore 1D, okay? This is what's called a one-dimensional array as well. You can do two-dimensional arrays, which involve doing things like, uh, like, like this, but that's more complicated and for a different tutorial on a different thing. We don't need any of that right now. We want a one-dimensional array, array, which is what this is. 
So array length 1D and the name of that array is menu. Okay, and then includes bracket, uh, semicolon, and that'll return three because it'll work out that there are three entries in here. Even though they're numbered starting from zero, there's three physical entries. So that's the number that will get returned is three, okay? Okay, so that was a lot of setup, but it does make everything we want to do later a lot easier um, to be able to refer to these values very dynamically. So let's now go back to O menu and add another event. This time we're going to add the draw GUI event, which we've used before, just to draw stuff that's locked to the screen and doesn't move based on our camera, okay? Now uh, before we do anything else, in fact, let's maximize this so we've got space, there we go. Uh, before we do anything else, we'll call it draw menu. Because uh, that's what we're going to be doing. And then I'm going to just set up some stuff for drawing text to the screen, okay? Uh, I'm going to type draw set font. So this is going to decide what font we're going to use. It's going to be F menu. So that's going to decide that. Uh, draw set H align. And this sets the horizontal alignment of any text drawing that we do, okay? Just like if you've used Microsoft Word or anything like that, you know what like paragraph alignment and stuff like that is. But this is going to be FA right. We want this right aligned, okay? So we're drawing text from the right, uh, well, I mean, not literally letter by letter, right to left, but um, aligned right to left, okay? Um, and then draw set V align, which is our vertical alignment, FA bottom. Because as I say, we're drawing from the bottom right upwards. So we're going to draw quit, then continue, then new game in that order, okay? It's important that you set these to whatever you want them to be before you ever draw any text. Um, and that includes even if you're working with a default. So by default, this is like left aligned. And I think like I think top aligned um, for V aligned and H aligned. Uh, but you, even if you, if those are the values that you want, um, you still need to set these every single time you want to do draw code, okay? Otherwise, you might run into a situation uh, where some code run, uh, one object runs its code uh, before another one, and you do some other text stuff, and your text uh, changes font for some reason, it appears to change font or change alignment randomly, and that's because um, it's still using the settings from last time. Because once you set these, they're set, and they will apply to all text drawing operations from that point forward, including in other objects and other times and so on, okay? So you have to make sure you set them specifically at the start of every time that you're going to do anything to do with your text, okay? Every single time. Next up, we're going to use what's called a for loop, okay? So I'm going to type for and open a bracket. So for works very much like a while loop that we've used before, okay, which is it's going to keep doing a series of things that we're going to put inside these brackets um, until a condition no longer is true. Where you would use a for loop um, rather than a while loop is if you've got a variable that you want to increase or decrease or do something with every single loop. Um, and use that variable to decide how to do certain things. So it's very useful for drawing, say, menu items in order or drawing like um, like a number of hearts in the top left or something like that for your lives or something like that, right? Uh, where you can use a number and increase that by one for every loop and use that to decide where you're drawing each thing uh, or, or something like that, okay? Um, so I'm going to create... Uh, so what you do in the for loop is you have to decide uh, what variable it's based on. So I'm going to type var i equals zero. The reason I've used var there rather than just writing i equals zero is because this is only a temporary variable that we're using for this for loop. We don't need it once we come out of this event, okay? So I'll just type var there where I declared it, okay? Uh, semicolon, now that's very important. That's one of the rare times where semicolons actually are really important. Um, i less than menu underscore items. Okay, so this is the condition. This is like the, the while loop condition. Uh, this is what decides whether or not we keep doing more loops or whether or not we've, uh, we, should, we should stop, okay? So while i is less than the number of menu items, which is three, it'll keep doing this. Um, and we're gonna go from naught to one to two, and then when we hit three, we break out, okay? Because those are our three menu items. Um, semicolon, again, very important. And then i plus plus. Or you could also write i plus equals one. Okay, or i equals i plus one. You get the point. We're increasing i by one. Okay, um, and that's uh, what should happen to i, or what should happen to the variable that we declared here every single loop of this for loop. Okay. So once you've got those three things in there, you've declared that i is zero, and while i or i starts at zero, while it is less than menu items, keep doing the loop, and every loop increase i by one. Okay, that's how a for loop works. Very, very useful. And you'll see how we use i to determine where to draw things as we do this.
So inside this uh, this for loop, we've got quite a lot of stuff to do in here. We're going to draw our whole menu. So I'm going to type var offset equals two. Okay, and you'll see what that's for in a second. Uh, var txt equals menu i. Okay, so again, we've referred back to our variable here. Um, our, our sorry, our array here, our array variable menu, which uh, from our career event has all of our menu items in it as strings, and we're going to take one of those strings, which is the uh, uh, the item of the menu that we're currently drawing, okay, and it's going to put that string into txt, um, just to allow us to be able to use that for drawing later. The reason we don't just grab this for when we do draw text and we put it in a variable is because we're going to manipulate it slightly here. I'm going to say if menu underscore cursor uh, equals i. Okay, so menu cursor is the oh, not square bracket. No regular bracket, there we go. Uh, so menu cursor, as we knew from our create event, um, let me open that as well just so I can show create event. So we knew in here is set to two, which is new game currently, right? Um, this is determining which option we're currently looking at. So if um, the item of the menu that we're currently drawing, because we're going to draw each one in turn, um, is the one that we've got selected, then I want to do a couple of things. I want to set txt. Our string to equal string insert open brackets um, and what this does is allows us to add an extra add a string onto another string or insert a string inside another string somewhere and what I'm going to do is the string I want to insert is um, just an, an right facing arrow I don't actually know what the name of that character is I'm sure it has a fun name and then a space and then that that that's it. That's the string that we're going to add. So we're just going to add this little arrow just to point at the option that we've got selected. Okay, um, the string I want to add it to, as you can see at the bottom here, it tells us substring, string, and index. The string is the string that we want to add it to is txt, and the index is whereabouts in that string we want to add it. We're going to add it as zero, which is at the start, so the far left of the string. Okay. Close bracket, semicolon. And then the other thing I want to do is I'm going to set another variable, another temp variable, col, to equal c underscore white. Okay, col is going to be the color of the menu item that we're going to draw. And then I'm going to put an else statement after this if statement here. So if this isn't uh, the menu item that we're, we're uh, if this isn't the menu item that we currently have selected, then we'll draw it just gray instead. So I'm going to set var col to equal c gray. Uh, I'm using the declaration both times there because obviously, um, I mean, I could declare var call up here and then just use the word call down there, but it's not really a big difference. Okay, so next up I'm going to work out where I want to draw this particular um, item of text, okay? So I'm going to use a couple more temporary variables to work that out so that I can just use those in the draw text thing rather than having a really long draw text line, okay? So var xx is going to be menu x, that's the really simple one, um, that's just going to be wherever our menu is horizontally. Um, var yy is going to equal menu underscore y. Uh, minus, and this is where we're going to make use of this um, i variable again, uh, menu underscore item height, uh, that's the height of our font, remember, uh, multiplied by, and we could just write multiplied by i at this point, but we want to also leave a bit of a space between each one, that'll just stack them right on top of one another, because it'll be like minus um, item height times zero, then item height times one, then item height times two. Um, but uh, we want to leave a bit of space. Let's multiply i by something. So let's open another bracket and do i times 1.5, close bracket, and then close the first set of brackets again, okay? Semicolon to end that line. Um, so that should let us draw each menu item one at a time from the bottom up, okay? So let's actually draw them now. Um, and what I'm going to do though is I'm going to use a, a really cheap, simple effect for creating a black outline around a text. Okay, this isn't the most efficient or effect. Well, it's, it's not too inefficient, um, but it's not the most efficient way of doing it. Um, but if you've not got many items of text drawing drawn on the screen, we're only drawing a handful for a menu, right? If you're drawing loads of items of text all over the screen, you might want a different way of doing this kind of thing, maybe baking it into the font and so on. But this is a quick way of doing an outline for a sprite. What I'm basically going to do is draw the text an extra four times in black, um, offset a little bit, um, and then draw the text in white or gray on top of that. So it creates like a little fake outline effect. Works really well with pixel fonts, doesn't work so well with other bigger, fancier fonts, okay? 
Uh, so draw set color C underscore black. Um, so that's before like actually, so we, before actually using our color, we're just setting it to black to draw the shadow or the rather the outline. Okay, I'm going to do draw text uh, XX uh, YY uh, TXT. Okay, semicolon, and I'm going to copy and paste that line uh, three times. Okay, so we've got four of these. Um, and then what I want to do is just mo mo modify the X position twice and the Y position twice um, to just a little bit in each direction. And that's where this offset variable that we create up here comes into play, right? Uh, it's going to be two pixels. So I'm just going to be two pixels in each direction. So I'm going to do XX minus offset. Then on the next one, XX plus offset. Then YY plus offset. And then YY minus offset. It doesn't matter what order you do those in, you do those in any order you like, just make sure you do all four of those. Then I'm going to set draw set color, which changes our drawing color again, back to col, okay, which is going to be either C white or C gray, which are constants for colors, um, depending on whether or not this is the item we've got selected. Then draw text XX YY TXT. Okay, and that'll draw that string where we want to draw it, okay? And since in our create event we set um, NUX to just be our GUI width for now, we should actually see that. Now let's run the game since we've already added that menu into the actual uh, the game world. And we can see it appearing here. So we've got new game, continue, quit. We can't modify it or change it in any way. That's the next step. Um, as you can see, it's drawing them in order. And because new game is the one we set to menu cursor, okay, it was just option number two. We can see it's drawn in white with a little arrow next to it to show that that's, um, that's the option that we want. Okay, so we'll close that now and go to O menu and we're going to add another event. This time it's going to be the step event. Okay, this is where we're going to actually control the menu and uh, make it move around and make it so that we can select uh, an option and go from one room to the next, okay? Okay, so in the step event, let's maximize this. Um, this is just gonna be called control menu, okay? And that's literally what we're gonna do. Um, so let's ease the items in from the far right of the screen. So they start off screen and they come in from the right, just as a nice little intro effect, okay? Item ease in. Uh, menu underscore X plus equal, so adding to that variable. Uh, open brackets, menu underscore x target, that's where we want to be, minus where we currently are, okay, close bracket, divided by menu speed. This is the exact same formula that we used in our camera to just sort of ease in, so it'll slow down as it comes to a halt once it comes in, okay? Um, let's actually now, if I just go to, oh, menu, if I go back to the create event, if I set this, if I get rid of this semicolon and this comment line here and actually set menu X to be GUI width plus 200, and then I run the game, we should find that uh, our thing starts off on the right and actually just comes in now, okay? Very simple, <laughs> it's drawing on top of the, of, the, of the bars at the moment, but that's okay. Um, so that comes in uh, nice and smooth. So back in the step event now, let's add a section for menu, uh, menu controls, okay? so. Just going to call this keyboard controls, okay? Eventually, we might want to be able to control it with the mouse since a lot of our game is controlled with the mouse and so on, but we're going to keep it as simple as we can for now. Um, we'll expand it later, okay? So, if menu control, that's our Boolean that's currently, I think, set to true. I hope it's set to true. Uh, create event, uh, menu control, yep, set to two. Um, let's go back to this. Uh, true, not two, sorry if I said that. Um, so, as, assuming this is set to true, um, if keyboard, which it is, underscore check, pressed, VK up, okay? So if we're pressing the up arrow key, menu cursor, plus plus, that'll just add one to it, okay? Or you could also, also do equals itself plus one and so on, but the quickest way is to just do that. Uh, if menu cursor greater than or equal to menu items, close bracket, menu, cursor, equals zero. So if we go above the number of items that we have in the menu, um, uh, it, it'll loop around, okay? So if I just run that now, and I just press up, you can see we cycle upwards through the menu. Luckily, just the numbers we have line it up so that that works mathematically when we're adding. Otherwise, you might get it the wrong way around, and you might have it so up is moving you down the menu and so on. You just change the way around that you're adding or subtracting and so on, right? Okay, so that works. And then we just do the opposite thing. If 
the down, okay? So I can just copy and paste this more or less. Um, to here, uh, keyboard check pressed VK down this time. Menu cursor minus minus to subtract one from it. Uh, this time, if menu cursor is less than zero, because zero is our uh, bottom option, right? That's our quit option. If it's less than that, we've gone off the bottom, so set menu cursor to equal uh, menu items minus one. We can't set it to three, which is menu items, because there is no option three. It only goes up to two, right? It's always going to be that way, no matter how big the array is, because that's the size of the array. But minus one from the size of the array is the final entry in the array. Okay, that's just how it always works. Um, if we were to run that, that would show that menu working correctly in terms of moving up and down it now. That's everything we want. Uh, so next we want to make it so that if we actually press enter, we do something, right? Actually make the menu functional. So if keyboard underscore check underscore pressed vk underscore enter. Okay. So if we press the enter key, uh, menu underscore x target, as you see, this is going on. We never stop doing this. It's just we reach the target in the end. So it stops actually having anywhere to move, right? But if we just change this to something else, then uh, our menu will scroll to that new position automatically. So menu x target equal GUI width plus 200. Okay, and send us back off to the, the far right of the screen again. Uh, menu underscore committed equals menu underscore cursor. Okay, so whichever option we always set that, uh, which is currently minus one, to be uh, the, the, the menu entry that we want, the one we selected. So that tells us what we've actually picked. Okay, um, then I guess we can do a little screen shake here, because why not, uh, from our command that we set up before. It's really easy to do now, remember. So, and we want it for magnitude of, say, 4 for 30 frames, okay? Just a simple little screen shake, just to, you know, give it a little uh, extra polish touch. And then menu control, lastly, set that to false. Okay, um, quickly I'll run that now, just to demonstrate the, I can move up and down the menu, and now if I select, say, continue, there's a little screen shake, and it goes off to the right. And we also can, wouldn't be able to control the menu anymore, like we can't control it off the screen, you can't see. But trust me, you can't, because we set menu control to be false. And we checked to see that that was true when we started doing this whole section, okay? Last of all, once we've actually moved off the edge of the screen, uh, we want to actually do whatever we've committed to, right? So if menu underscore x is greater than GUI width plus 150, uh, plus 150, not equals 150, um, which it is at the start of the game, so we need to make sure there's a bit of a difference there. And menu committed, you could also write and in there as well, um, which is a special thing, but um, I'm just using two ampersand symbols to do two conditions at once. Uh, and menu committed does not equal minus one. So assuming both of those things are true, um, the menu committed thing is what makes sure it doesn't do it right at the start of the game when it's already off to the right, right? So if it's gone off to the right and we've committed to um, an option. Uh, switch, okay, this is another switch event just like we set up in the, the uh, slide transition stuff, right? Switch menu underscore committed. So we're gonna do something based on what menu committed is. Okay, open and close a block. Case uh, two, okay, that's our new game case, all right, and also case default. So default will happen in case we, if we say it was menu committed was 12 or 30 or something like that, um, and we didn't have a case for that number, it would just do whatever is in default, right, okay? And by putting these two together like this, um, they're both basically the same thing, right, okay? Um, so slide, oh, capital S, slide transition, uh, that's our script from before, right? Trans uh, underscore mode dot next. So that'll just so send us to the next room, right? Uh, semicolon break. Uh, now I could do a case one, which is for our continue, but we we don't have saving and loading or anything like that right now. Um, so I'm just gonna rely on case one being uh, running through the default. Uh, so it's just gonna act as if we selected new game. Um, so I'm not going to write a case one. I'm going to go straight to case zero, which is going to be if we want to quit. So I'm just going to simply do game underscore end, which will just close the game down, okay? Uh, and then break at the end of there so we don't carry on. And then that's our whole switch statement. So if I run the game now, 
Oh, oopsie doopsie. Um, I spelled committed wrong. Uh, where have I spelled that wrong? Com 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 committed. Okay, there we go. Classic typo error, the most common error you'll ever have. Um, okay, so we've got our game up now, and the menu is here. And if I select new game, it goes off to the side, closes, brings us into the game world. If I restart the game now, and I select uh, quit instead, it goes off to the side, the game closes. And last of all, if I select continue, it'll just do the default. It'll just assume I've selected new game and do the exact same thing, bring us through into the game. So that's how you do menus um, in a very simple way, but that's very expandable. You can just keep adding options to that. Um, in the, in the create event, you can just keep adding different text options and then keep adding different cases for what you want that to specifically do. Okay, very, very simple. There's a lot more we can add to this, mouse control and so on, all kinds of things like that, which we're probably going to in later parts, but I didn't want to make this one too long. It's already a little bit long. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found that useful. We went through a lot of different stuff there. Um, let me know if you're enjoying this. Um, thank you to my Patreon supporters who will be in the credits in a moment, and I'll see you guys next week. Shoutouts to this month's extra special superheroes, Dan in a Mule, Nick Slabish, Stephen Hagen, John Grimshaw, Nathaniel Walsh, Bowser the Dog, Louis R. Pereira, Giles Montgomery, Harold Guidry, Jason McMillan, and Owen Morgan. If you want to get more involved in what I do, would like to see my videos go ad-free and get access to other perks, please check out my Patreon account for more info on how to do exactly that. That's what these guys do, and they're the only reason I can make videos like this every week. Thanks everybody, see you next time.